Good morning, folks. The sun is firing flares and CMEs, some coming our way. We've got big quakes and top science news, but we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was active. In addition to numerous eruptions at the limb, the northern active region has been flaring and expelling. The X-ray flux is reaching into C-class flare range with the potential for more today, and the eruptions are clearly moving plasma in the corona. While the coronagraph images are lagging, it is clear that components of these ejections are indeed on Earth's heliographic latitude. These eruptions would begin impacting Earth around Monday, but more eruptions are likely given the last 12-hour surge of activity. Let's take a quick look at those quakes here. Seven pointer in China. Six is there as well, at least three deaths reported. Also a larger rumble near Fiji and Tonga. Up first in the article list today is Chandra and the creation of new 3D videos and interactive simulations based on the data. The visualizations they have prepared are beautiful, but so are the interactive pages where you can scroll, zoom, turn, and poke around to your own desires. Really liking these? Link is in the list below the video. In the spirit of recent discoveries suggesting subterranean conditions could support life on Mars today, the discovery of ancient salts now informs their search indicating some of the best places to look for microbial life of old, or of now, I have to admit. It's a bit frustrating that instead of getting a high zoom photo or microscope shot first, they just destroy the sample and chemically analyze it. Seems like they should be doing that first thing I said, but what do I know? The story I saw everywhere yesterday on the third-party science reporting sites was the changing Hubble constant over time. FYI observers, that is indeed the story we covered back on May 18th, where since the observations of the universe keep getting in the way of their lambda cold dark matter fantasy, they decide that the physics simply get to change over time to suit their models, and the mainstream cheers. Our top article today includes one of the individuals with whom we engage regularly, and given that fact, I'm sure it will be utterly shocking to find them exploring galactic scale magnetic fields. We had a very nice conversation yesterday exploring why polarized light on the right shows the high definition of the magnetic fields at the galactic level, the waves within the spirals, but far infrared on the left shows a much more distorted and less organized field structure. Various things are in play, but one of them is the dust re-emission of photoionization in the infrared range, showing dust and gaseous filaments and clouds more prominently, especially in the galactic hemisphere closer to us. If you are thinking, who cares? Welcome, new viewer. The galactic waves of the current sheet radiate outward and interact with the sun every 12,000 years. We see magnetic excursions on Earth, nova-level isotopes that almost certainly come from the sun, minor extinction-level events, and great waves that seem to reach across the continents about every 12,000 years, last one 12,000 years ago. There is record activity at the nearby stars now, and our sun is changing chemically and magnetically. The other planets are changing in ways that implicate a change to their magnetic field, and Earth's magnetic field is declining almost like it's right on time, and the magnetic poles are shifting. True story, backed up by real evidence in peer-reviewed journals. Links found just below the video in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.